Next question is from Joey0089. What are your thoughts on primal movement or animal flow? Justin, didn't yeah. you go on a didn't you go on a kick on this for a little bit, or did, did. just all your guys inside your gym? Yeah, in, in my gym. I, I guess I was picking up on because they all went to the animal flow uh, certification and kind of brought back a lot of these movements. And I thought it was interesting. I thought it was like, how the hell am I going to incorporate this with clients? Because it's it's pretty out there in terms of getting people to uh, uh, subscribe to the idea of like crawling and moving in all these like weird directions. But I mean, I understand the concept of it in terms of like uh, applying um, positions that are challenging, whether in a static pose or, or now like with movement where, you know, I'm trying to, to connect everything. I'm trying to get more body awareness and be able to have more command over my body. And it's really challenging and it's hard. A lot of people don't like to stay in that position where you're in sort of a, a you know, quadruped uh, type position and then do these types of crawling patterns. It's really challenging, but it's interesting because it's, it's, it's a totally different way to train your body. It's really inclusive of the entire uh, system. And so I think that there's, there's validity in it, but um, you know, in terms of kind of contrasting that with lifting weights, we're so robotic and, uh, you know, focused on either single joints or just, you know, sagittal plane type um, uh, exercises that this totally uh, is a shock for people. So it takes a lot of practice. That's why I think it's phenomenal. I think this is uh, so I, I haven't gone through the certification. I've practiced some of the movements uh, that you'll find in like animal flow. Uh, use, it was towards the end of my training career, so I haven't used it a lot with clients. But I tell you what, I, this is something that I could see myself like getting into, like, you know, I went on a mobility kick. I've gone on a bodybuilding kick. I've gone on a strength, you know, kick for a while. Like, I'll go on these kicks where, like, I'm just going to focus on something and get really good at it. I think there would be tremendous benefit to somebody like saying, I'm just going to get good at this animal flow. Uh, I think that it, one, you're going to, you're going to get some muscle from it. Obviously, if your goal is to build maximal muscle, it's not the most optimal way for you. Obviously bodybuilding type of routine, strength routine is going to get, build more muscle, but you will get some, some muscle from it. You're going to get some, but more than anything else, you're going to work on your, your movement. And like you, Justin, you were alluding to, it was like your entire body working together and then moving in all these different planes. So your your joint mobility and health, I think, would be phenomenal from going through yeah, this. Yeah, just familiarizing your yourself with uh, being placed in a position that you wouldn't normally find yourself in throughout the day. So uh, to be able to work your way out of that with strength, I think that's really interesting. And I think a lot of people could benefit from that uh, because most injuries are going to occur when your body's in a position you're not familiar with. And, mm. and, and then now what happens is you try to gain stability really hard in one direction while your body might be turning or moving in another direction, and then, boom, you're, you're caught off guard. Well, it reminds me of the feeling that I have right now from the wake, talking about wakeboarding. I mean, my body was, was contorted in, in a way that it hadn't been contorted in a very long time, and I was reminded of that like by how sore I am right now. And just by doing movements like that, uh, probably would have prevented the way I feel today had I been doing things like that. Yeah, the, I think it's important, though, we, we kind of uh, discern between the primal patterns and animal flow because yeah, they, they are, are different. different yeah. Primal patterns refers to movement patterns that we consider to be fundamental to humans, the yeah. human animals. So Walking, squatting. squatting. So there's squatting, lunging, there's bending or hip hinging, mm -hmm. uh, twisting, which would be like throwing, for example, th that's which is a fundamental mu movement, mm -hmm. pulling, pushing, pulling, pushing, crawling, and then gait, uh, walking, jogging, or sprinting. I'm a huge proponent of primal pattern movements. In fact, the most effective exercises with weights that you could do from a muscle building, fat burning, body sculpting perspective. They don't have crawling? No, not on the primal uh, no, that's patterns. A, that's no. interesting. Um, tend to be around these primal patterns, right? If you think of all the most effective exercises that we talk about, they're either squatting, lunging, bending, twisting, pulling, pushing, or have to do with gait, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that. Then when it comes to animal flow... Uh, that's a little bit different. Animal flow is more... Um, Breakdancing moves. <laughs> no. the, that's the easy way to describe it. Well, animal flow is more stuff uh, that's quadruped, on hands and knees, uh, crawling, gorilla, yeah. bear, that kind of stuff. And I think that what they try to do is hark back to before maybe we became 
you know, two legged. Well, you're in, you're emulating a lot of animals that aren't upright, uh, and so you're trying to kind of move where you're getting like scapular involvement uh, with your walking, with your hands, and your bending, and your you know being able to stabilize your body in that in that uh, position. Yeah. So if I was to give like to rate both of them, I'd say primal movement patterns uh, I believe to be m- much more valuable. But that doesn't mean that animal flow movements don't have a lot of value because. <laughs> Getting on the floor, moving with hands and knees, doing these kinds of movements is going to work on mobility just naturally because you're on the floor. You're twisting, you're turning, you're using your hands and knees. It is going to work on wrist mobility, shoulder mobility, hip mobility, spinal mobility. It's going to help you get your body to communicate with itself differently. Um, Just by practicing those movements, you're going to get better at moving uh, overall. So I think they both have a lot of value. But if I had to pick one to focus on, the primal movement patterns just have a longer well, history and evidence. Think the, I think primal movement is mandatory. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a mandatory one, and then animal it's foundational. Yeah, and then then animal flow to me is a is a would be a cool, fun focus, right? It's mm. like if you wanted to get into something that's unique and different, that would have all kinds of these benefits that maybe you weren't aware of, like. Yeah, somebody who, who who deals with like chronic joint pain and tight and all the time, like going in practicing animal flow and maybe less well, focused on building a bunch of maximal muscle mm-hmm. inside the gym and doing that instead. I, I you would see tremendous benefit from that. I look at it too as like it's a progression of like challenging your mobility after you've established that you're stable. Right? Yeah. So it's like now I want to be able to actually work on strengthening it even more without just using it as maintenance. Like I want to challenge it. Uh, and I look at it the same way with like mace bells and Indian clubs and things like that that are unconventional, but it provides this fluidity of movement that's loaded. And so you're using like loaded because you're using gravitational forces being in this quadruped position so it's really challenging it's hard and it's interesting that way 